Okay, let's start in Tadasana today, starting in your mountain pose. So settling into nice comfy stance at your feet. First, just letting the, the angle and the distance of the feet be whatever feels good and supportive. Starting to think about rooting down through the soles of your feet, finding your connection and beginning to build your foundation. <clears throat> so maybe bringing a little more weight into the heels and then the toes one foot and then the other foot and really find that place where you can feel equally connected through all surfaces of both feet. <clears throat> and then finding stillness in the feet, imagine opening up the soles of the feet, really pressing the feet down into your mat so that you can grow long up away from your foundation. Starting to find that gentle expansiveness in the spine, a lightness at the top of the head a little more length to the back of the neck. <clears throat> and let's pause here for a moment and take a few breaths, just, just settling into your mountain pose. So noticing your breath just as it is, tuning into the sensation of your in-breath, sensation of your out breath, maybe softening through the gaze or closing the eyes. What sort of movement comes with your breath? Where does it travel to? Do you feel like you fully empty with your exhale or not? I'm just pausing here for a moment. See if you could really let your full awareness be present just with the sense of your breath. And then beginning to lengthen, deepen into your breath cycle. So beginning that idea of really intentionally expanding fully with each in-breath, filling the lungs completely, feeling the ribs draw outward in all directions. And then slowing down the exhale a little bit invitation if it feels right make that exhale slightly longer than your inhale staying here a few more breaths or starting to bring in that little bit of breath retention full expansive intentional inhale and then find that little pause at the top maybe just a second or two complete slow exhale and maybe a little pause at the bottom when you're completely empty taking one more breath here letting go of retention if you're there Letting go of breath control entirely, just taking a few natural breaths just as they are. And then coming into a more traditional mountain pose. So as long as it's comfortable and supportive for your legs, we're gonna bring the feet so they're parallel with our second toe pointing at the top of our mat and about a fist distance between the big toe or the ball of the foot. And then once again, imagine you're really opening up the surfaces of the feet pressing the soles of the feet down. Use that sense of rooting downward toward the earth to grow long in the body, long in the spine. So we have that 
Downward connection at our feet, skyward connection at the crown of the head. Take a little shoulder roll up back down and then let the palms either face the sides of the thighs or gently open up toward the front of your space. Take a big inhale here, reach, reach, reach the crown of the head for your ceiling. With an exhale, slowly lower your chin down toward your chest. And then start a little slow roll side to side in the neck, letting your chin draw toward one collarbone back to the chest, other collarbone, and then begin to increase the size of that arc, letting the chin draw a little closer out to the top of the shoulder. Eventually ear comes all the way to the shoulder, moving back and forth. Take a couple more half rolls here or open up to a full neck circle, a couple times one direction and then switch directions a couple times going the other way letting the chin fall all the way back to the chest imagine a little more length to the back of the neck and then lifting the head all the way back up find that gentle opposition in the spine soles of the feet through crown of the head take a full exhale here with your next inhale sweep the arms wide and overhead find an upward hands pose and then add a little bit of a back bend so palms facing one another or maybe hands gently resting together as you gaze up past the hands stretch through the whole front line of the body bend the knees as much as you need to find some support here take a few breaths each breath may be stretching through the front body a little more, letting the gaze and the hands come a little further behind you. Take a full exhale, wait for your inhale, lift yourself all the way back up to neutral spine, reaching skyward through the fingertips and the crown of the head. With an exhale, dive all the way over to forward fold, bending the knees, hinging at the hips, parting the hands wide, softening down over the thighs, Letting that belly come all the way down toward or into the thighs, deeply bending the knees, fingertips reaching toward the earth in front of your toes. And then walk your hands over toward the right side of your mat or reach your hands over toward the right side of your mat. Find a breath, pulling that way. Take a little stretch in left side body. And then slow drawing or walking the hands back through center. Over to the other side, take a full breath, reaching or walking the hands to the left, stretching right. Slow walking or reaching hands back through center. Imagine a slow roll all the way back up to your mountain pose. So start by aligning the tailbone then stacking the lumbar spine over the tail, mid back over the low back. Eventually head and neck come up and then we take that little shoulder roll up back down again. Find your long spine. Take a full exhale in your Tadasana. Inhale, sweep the hands high, upward hands pose. Exhale, dive over forward fold. Deeply bending the knees, finding that soft spine. And this time we'll take a twist. So reaching your left fingertips toward the mat in front of your, <laughs> to your mat in front of your gaze, or if it's in reach, fingertips or palm pressed down. Deeply bending your left knee, sliding your right hand to your hip, opening that shoulder up toward the sky, gazing past the shoulder, or if you like releasing the hand up toward the ceiling. Take another breath here. And then with your next exhale, sweep yourself back down through your forward fold, switching the places of the hands. Inhale, find your opposite side. Waiting for that next exhale, moving back through your forward fold. Option here to take another slow roll up, aligning the spine a little bit at a time, or if you like, circle sweep to standing. Pressing into the feet, inviting the arms wide and overhead. Find that upward hands pose with a little bit of a back bend. And then exhale yourself back to Tadasana. Grounding through the soles of the feet, finding that gentle opposition, long spine. Inhaling, lifting the hands, open the heart. Exhale, diving forward. And this time, inhaling to your half forward fold. So pressing into the soles of the feet, feet, lengthen the back of the legs, find that long spine, build your upside down L shape with your body as you slide your hands to your shins or your thighs. 
And then just checking here that you still have length. You're still maintaining that lumbar curve. And then if you can keep that lumbar curve, maybe you try bringing your heart just a little closer to your feet. Take one more big inhale, use your exhale to soften and release to forward fold. Use your inhale to slow roll or circle sweep your way up. Exhale, find your standing foundation, Tadasana. Inhaling, bringing the hands high, as much of a back bend as feels good. Exhale, dive your way forward. Inhale, pressing up again to that half fold. And this time we'll add airplane arms, find a little stretch for the shoulder. So build that upside down L, find your long neutral spine, opening the sits bones up and back to the space behind you. And then float the hands alongside the hips, palms facing the earth, and then lift the arms a little higher than the spine. Take another big inhale, exhale, releasing down, forward fold, inhale, slow roll or circle sweep. Finding that standing foundation. Inhale, bringing the hands up overhead. This time we'll pause again with the hands overhead. First reaching both fingertips right up toward the ceiling, find long spine, and then bring the right fingertips around the left wrist. Take an inhale, lengthen through the arms and the spine. Exhale, keeping your weight even between your two feet and the pelvis in the center of your mat. Side bend to the right, gently drawing that left hand further away with the right, stretching that whole left upper, upper side, hip to armpit. Taking a full exhale, use your inhale to lift through center, switch the wrists. Exhale, side bend left, weight equal between the feet, pelvis over the center of your mat. Next inhale, lift center, release the wrist. Exhale, dive yourself over, forward fold. Once again, walking the hands over toward the right side of your mat, reaching hands in that direction as you take a full breath. Back through center. Second side. Back through center, slow roll or circle sweep. Find your mountain. And from the top, inhale, lifting. Exhale, dive. Reach those left fingertips toward the mat or plant right fingertips or palm. Bending the left knee to twist right, slide the right hand to the hip or send it overhead. Next exhale, takes you back through forward fold. Inhale, opposite side. Big inhale, exhale, moving through forward fold, inhale to find your way up, however feels good. Exhale to settle into your Tadasana. Inhaling, sweeping the hands overhead, pausing again, palms facing one another or hands gently come together, stretching through the whole front line of the body. Each breath takes those hands and gaze back just a little further, bend your knees as needed. Take a big inhale here, exhale, bring yourself back to neutral spine, pull the hands to heart center. 
Interlace the fingers at heart center. Take a full inhale. Flip those palms to reach away from heart center. Exhale, round the spine, gaze down between the arms. With your next inhale, lifting those interlaced palms up overhead, keeping the hips in the center of the mat. Exhale, side bend right. Just take a moment to notice any differences in sensation with this different position of the hands and arms. Same, different, better, worse. Next inhale, lift yourself through center. Exhale, take yourself to the left. Next inhale, lift center, release the fingertips. Exhale, dive over, forward fold. Bringing the fingertips to opposite elbows, letting the arms dangle, torso dangle, head dangle. Take a little movement side to side, moving through the neck, arm, spine, maybe a little bit of hips. And then finding stillness in center, Bringing the fingertips down toward the space in front of the toes. We're gonna to ground through the ball of the left foot and slide the right leg back for warrior one. So bring your right leg just about halfway back your mat, touch down your heel so your foot's at about a 45 degree angle, toes pointed toward front left corner of mat. Step the hands up to the front thigh or bring them right overhead as you find left knee over left ankle and hips square to the front of your mat. So that right side of the pelvis is gently drawing forward, left thigh drawing back. We're gonna draw the tailbone down toward the earth, trying to find neutral pelvis, knitting the low ribs in, crown of the head right over the center of the hips. And then if you float with your hands on your thigh, go ahead and bring those hands up overhead. Shoulder distance between the palms, facing one another. Draw those arms down into the shoulder sockets. And then imagine pressing more firmly into both your feet. Like you're gonna try to slide your feet away from one another, but still keeping that pelvis neutral and square. And then we're gonna draw your elbows back and down for cactus arms or goalpost arms. So find those 90 degree bends at the elbows, really open through the heart, open through the throat, lift the gaze, press your forearms toward the wall behind you. Take a couple breaths here if it feels good. Each breath could find a little more back bend, a little more opening. And then beginning to lift yourself back to neutral, sending those fingertips overhead. And then as we did in mountain pose, we're gonna bring the hands around the wrist to side bend. So taking your left fingertips around your right wrist, keeping that lower body as it is. Take an inhale, reach through the hands, elongate your spine. Exhale, side bend to the left. And then wait for your next inhale, begin to lift yourself through center and go to the opposite side. So inhale to lift, switch your wrist, exhale, side bend right. Next inhale, lifting center, release the wrist. Exhale, sweep your hands around to the low back. And moving toward pyramid pose. So either interlace those fingers behind the sacrum or just rest hands to the low, low back tops of the glutes. Press into that left foot, straighten the knee without locking it. Inhale, find nice long spine. Exhale, hinging from the hips, folding forward. Imagining that half forward fold shape we make. Where we're in an upside down L, keeping the spine long. That's what we're reaching for with our upper body. Taking a breath there. And then with your next exhale, softening through the spine, reaching the head down for the left knee. If you're in fingers interlaced variation, maybe you might like to lift those hands up away from the spine, either towards your ceiling or toward the wall in front of you.
If hands are interlaced and lifted, go ahead and start to soften your hands back toward your spine. We're gonna bring ourselves back to that halfway point and slide the hands around to the left thigh or shin. So lift yourself back up halfway. We're in long spine, hinging from the hips, hands at the left thigh or shin. We're gonna slide the right hand to the outside of the leg, coming to the outer part of the left thigh or outer part of the left calf. And we're gonna twist the heart open to the left, sliding the left hand to the hip. Revolved pyramid pose or twisted pyramid. Take another big inhale here. Use your exhale to turn the heart back down toward the earth. Slide that left hand back to the thigh. Inhale to lift yourself all the way back up to warrior one. Lifting the torso, bending the left knee, sending the hands overhead. And then take a moment, just pause in that warrior one. Realign the lower body. Find your neutral pelvis, re-square your hips. Make sure those arms are seated down into your shoulder sockets. Take a big inhale. We're gonna use the exhale, bring the hands down to frame that left foot. And then our right foot's gonna slide forward to meet our left. We're back in forward fold. And then decide if you would like to slow roll up, finding a nice rag doll or find stillness. Circle, sweep your way up. And settling back into your warrior one. Inhaling, lifting the hands. Exhaling, diving over, fold. Taking fingertips or palms to the floor, ground through your right foot, slide your left leg back, moving toward your warrior one. Connecting the heel, foot at about a 45 degree angle. As you lift up, we align that left knee Nope, right knee, right over the right ankle. And then again, as you come up, just making those little checks for yourself. What could you do to find neutral pelvis, square hips, aligned spine, top to bottom. When you're ready, if you're not there already, bringing in those arms, making sure those shoulders are really solid. and then opening those elbows out and down. 90 degree bend at the elbows, press forearms toward the wall behind you. Open the heart, open the throat, crown of the head falls back. Pause, find your breath. Stretching through the front body, stretching through the fronts of the shoulders. Lifting yourself back to neutral, reaching the hands overhead. Right fingertips come around the left wrist. Exhale, side bend to the right. Lifting back through center, release the wrist, switch sides, side bend left. Lifting through center, release the wrist, sweep the hands around to the low back as you straighten that front knee. Resting the hands at the glutes, or if you like, interlace the fingers. First, hinging from the hip, folding forward. Take another deep breath in. Use your exhale to soften and down. Round the spine, head melts for right knee. If you like, arms peel up away from the back. If arms are lifted, starting to lower the arms back down. 
lifting back to that halfway point, long spine, sliding hands to the right thigh or shin, getting ready to twist yourself to the right. So that left hand is gonna cross center line, come to the outer thigh or outer calf. Turn the heart to the right, slide your hand to your hip. Exhale to turn your way down. Inhale to find your way back to warrior one. And again, just pause in that warrior one, make any little movements or micro adjustments that feel good. And then waiting for an exhale, use that exhale, sweep the hands down to frame the front foot. And then slowly bringing those left toes forward to meet the right forward fold, ragdoll up or circle sweep. And then coming into a nice solid mountain pose for a moment, resting the hands wherever is comfortable. We're gonna stretch the tops of the feet. So I like to have hands on hips here, but they could be down beside you or they could be at heart center. We're gonna bring our weight over to our left foot, lift the right heel, slide that right foot just behind you and then flip so the top of your foot and toes are on your mat and then press that foot firmly down into your mat. And then release that slide, that foot forward to meet the left. Ground through that foot, lift that left heel, slide it back, flip top of the toes, maybe part of the top of the foot, press down. And relax that, slide that foot forward, plant it next to right from wherever your hands landed. Take an inhale to reach them overhead, stretching through front body. Take an exhale to dive all the way over, find your fold, planting fingertips or palms. We're gonna bring the legs back to tabletop. So stepping back one leg at a time, find your knees, but leave your toes tucked. Coming right to the opposite sides of the feet. So send your hips back toward your heels. You come all the way back and you don't have much of a stretch. Bring yourself back up enough that you can reach back with your hand on your same side. Pull your toes in closer to your knee. And start to press your way back. And starting to make your way back toward tabletop. When you get there, aligning the shoulders right over the wrist, firming up both palms and shoulders. Untuck the toes and then just quickly tap the tops of the feet into your mat. And finding stillness. Taking a nice deep inhale in your tabletop, exhale to round the spine, find your cat stretch, lowering the crown of the head and the tailbone, mid spine lift, stretching between the shoulder blades, pause at the top, take a full breath, and then lower the belly, open the heart, find your cow, pause and take a full breath. So find a flowing movement here, but thinking about each shape, you're gonna pause and take a full extra breath cycle, feeling the stretch. Taking one more cow after that last one, moving back through your tabletop. And then bring the knees a little wide on your mat. Let your toes point toward one another. Send the hips to the heels. Find your wide knee child's pose.
Activating the palms, inhale to lift yourself back up, tabletop. Bringing the knees back in line with the hips. We'll slide the hands a little forward of the shoulder. Tuck the toes, float the tailbone, find your downward facing dog. Heels reaching in the direction of the earth, sits bones opening up and back. Long neutral spine. Crown of the head reaching toward the space between the thumbs. Little bend in the knees, little bend in the elbows. And then ground through the ball of the left foot. We're gonna slide the right leg back for tail of the dog. And rather thinking about the alignment of your pelvis, just let that right leg reach back in whatever way feels good. So reach through the toe or the heel or the knee or whatever feels good, thinking about lengthening that leg away from the spine, away from the crown of the head. Take a big inhale as you exhale, bring that foot all the way forward toward the hands. If you like, right hand can come to support ankle or calf. Bring that leg forward, bringing it back under the knee and we'll lower the left knee. Untuck the toe, find a low lunge. So right knee over right ankle. We're gonna step the hands up to the front knee or send the hands overhead. Letting your hips sink down a little closer to the earth. If the knee tries to go very far forward of the ankle, we'll scoot that right foot a little closer to the top of the mat. Lighting or sweeping the hands around to the low back. Like we do in our pyramid, the hands could either rest at the glutes or we could interlace the fingers and draw the hands toward the heel. Either way, we're gonna open through the front body, stretching the front of the lumbar spine, stretching the front of the shoulder, stretching the throats. Take a few breaths here. Maybe each breath you could find a little more back bend. Bringing yourself back toward Anjana Yasana, grounded lunge, lifting the torso, bringing the hands back to the thigh or overhead. And then we're gonna come toward half split or half monkey. So if it feels best, hands could stay at the thigh or we could bring the fingertips down to frame the right foot. We're gonna ground the sole of the right foot, keep it flat, lift your hips, pull your hips back toward your left heel. Keep your spine long, crown of the head reaching away from the tailbone. Take another full inhale. As you exhale, let yourself draw back further. Lift the right toes, spine softens, head reaches down for right knee. Starting a slow walk forward, bending back into that knee. If your hands are up on the thigh, we're gonna go ahead and bring them down, moving toward lizard pose. So bringing your right hand inside your right foot, heel toe your right foot to the right edge of your mat. Maybe pause here. Maybe let your right knee fall out off the right side of your mat. If you have a block handy, maybe stepping your forearms down onto your block or if it's in your practice onto the floor. Or if you wanna build a little more warmth, you could tuck the left toe and float the knee, lizard lunge. So just taking a moment, tune into what you're looking for this morning. If a stretch feels better, or a little more heat building feels better, find your version of a lizard. Take a few full, slow breaths. And if you're lifted in the back knee, go ahead and lower down. If you're down on forearm, slow stepping your way up. Activating that right inner thigh, starting to bring the knee back in, heel toeing that foot back in line with the hip. Hands frame the right foot and we'll rock the hips back and forth a few times on the mat. So if it feels better from here, you could transition back to tabletop first and then come to your downward facing dog. Or we could come all the way forward, plant both the hands, 
Tuck the left toe, lift the knee, slide that right leg all the way back to your tail of the dog, three leg dog. Again, just letting that leg reach long in whatever way it feels good. And bring it down to me, the left pause, take a few full breaths in your down dog or find a tabletop or a child's pose. Enjoying one more full breath cycle. And then if you're not there already, building your way back to downward facing dog. Grounding through the sole of the right foot. Slide that left leg back behind you and just thinking about letting it be long, letting it find a stretch, letting it find whatever reach or movement feels good. Maybe you're reaching through the heel or the toe or the knee. Take a big inhale, exhale to bring that foot forward and comes to support as needed, finding your ankle under your knee, lower your right knee, untuck your toe, stepping hands up to the thigh, maybe bringing them overhead. And then take a moment to just really sink into that low lunge, deepening your stretch by letting the hips sink heavy or the foot scoot closer to the top of your mat. And sliding or sweeping the hands around to the low back. If you like fingers interlaced variations, hands are pulling toward that right heel. And then we stretch through the front body, open the throat, crown of the head falls back. Beginning to lift yourself back toward neutral spine, sweeping or sliding the hands back around. Hands could stay at the thigh if you like, or bringing hands down to frame that front foot. Starting to lift the hips, pull them back toward right heel. Left knee straightens, left foot stays flat. Next exhale, let yourself come back a little further. Lift the left toes around the spine, head toward knee. Starting a slow walk forward, bending back into that knee, bringing the left hand inside the foot, foot heel toes to the edge of the mat. Find your version of a lizard or a lizard lunge here. Maybe it's exactly the same as the first side or maybe the body asks for something a little different on the second side. Enjoying one more full breath and then starting a slow unwind back toward low lunge. Rocking the hips back and forth on your mat. Maybe setting yourself up to flow back through tabletop and then come to downward facing dog or Low lunge, tuck the back toe, lift the knees, slide that left leg all the way back. Find a tail of the dog, stretch, stretch, stretching through the leg. Bringing that leg down to meet the right, pause in your downward facing dog or find a tabletop or find a child's pose. Take a couple full breaths.
And then if you're in down dog, go ahead and lower the knees. And we'll make our way up toward a low kneel. So we're gonna slide the hands in toward the knees. If you widen the knees for a wide knee child's pose, we're gonna bring the knees back in line with hips. If Virasana hero pose is too much for the knees, we're either gonna grab some blocks to put under the sits bones or we're gonna grab a rolled up blanket or a pillow to tuck between heels and glutes. And so just first pausing in hero and just kind of notice the sensation, particularly at the quads maybe in the knees as well. If you already have a little bit of a stretch, we'll stay right here. Just find a few breaths. If you want a little more, starting to lean back, bring the fingertips to the earth behind the hips. Pay attention to if and when the knees start to try to pull up off the mat. That's the body saying, okay, we've gone a little too far. But feel free to walk your hands back to that point where the knees aren't trying to lift up off of your mat. And you don't have a very high intensity of stretch at the quads. So nothing that feels grabby, stabby, but definitely a sensation of stretch. And starting to slow lift your way back up if you're not there already. Eventually bringing hands back to the thighs if they're not still there. We're gonna slide the hands down to the mat, lift ourselves back to tabletop. So scoot any seated props or tush props that you were using out of the way. Find that nice firm tabletop, take a big inhale, exhale, round the spine. Find your cat stretch, take a full breath. Lower the belly, open the heart, find cow, take a full breath. And bring yourself back to tabletop, ground down through both palms, all 10 tips of the fingers, left shin and top of the foot, and then slide right foot back behind you, lifting the knee, keeping the toes gently resting down onto your mat, and then slide those toes in toward the body. Press toes down into your mat, press into your hands, rock your body weight back toward your right leg. Relaxing that, sliding the right leg all the way out to the right side. Flip the toes to point toward the top of your mat. Glue that right sole of the foot down to your mat. And as we start to bring ourselves back, left ankle, knee, and hip stay right in the same plane. Lower hip back toward heel as far as we can go. Keeping all those joints aligned in the same plane and keeping right sole of the foot flat down to the earth. If you can come all the way back, that left hip joint is right over the heel and right sole of the foot still connected and you don't have much of a stretch. Lift yourself back up, heel to that right foot a little closer to the top of your mat. As you sink back, being really mindful, hips aren't trying to run away over to the right. Start to lift your way back up, shoulders align over the wrist. If you scooted that right foot forward, bring it back so it's back in line with your left knee. Walk your hands in toward your left knee. We're gonna lift up to a high kneel. So eventually bringing hands to hips, lifting torso up over the hip. So again, right ankle, same plane as left knee, toes pointed toward front of our mat. We're gonna open the left hand, <laughs> right hand, Palm face up on your right thigh. Send your left hand high, palm facing the right. Find a big inhale here. As you exhale, slide into a side bend, sliding that right hand out toward right foot. Take a few breaths, thinking about each exhale, sinking you a little deeper into that stretch. Each exhale, taking that right foot, right hand a little closer to that foot.
Use your next inhale to lift yourself all the way back to neutral spine. Use your exhale, bring the left hand to the hip. And we're gonna heel toe this right foot in just a little bit so we can turn the toe out to face the right side of our mat. Find about a 90 degree bend in the knee. So ankle is right under the knee or just a little further out than the knee. We'll bring the right hand just to the inner part of the lower thigh. Gently press that hand into the knee. Pull, pull, pull the crown of your head up towards your ceiling. Take a big inhale. As you exhale, twist left, gently pressing that hand into the knee. And then think about each inhale, taking that crown of the head a little taller. Each exhale, maybe taking you just a little further to your twist. And starting a slow unwind back toward the front. Send this right foot out in whatever way you need to feel supported as you hinge at the hips and bring your hands back down toward the space in front of your left knee. We'll walk the hands out again, eventually sliding that right leg all the way back behind you, bringing your knee down to meet the left. We're back in our tabletop. Take a big inhale, exhale yourself up into cat stretch. Take a full breath. Lower the belly, open the heart, take a full breath. And finding your foundation in tabletop, firming up the connection at that right shin and top of the foot. Slide your left leg back, lift the knee. Toes are gently connected to the earth as you slide the toes in and then press toes down, press into your hands, press your body weight back toward your left leg. Relaxing that, left leg comes all the way out to the left side. Point your toes to the top of your mat. If you already know you need to go ahead and adjust, maybe bring that left foot just a little further forward. And as you start to bring yourself back, remember that left hip is lowering directly toward the left heel. Nope, right. I just can't get my lefts and rights right today. Slow lifting back up, shoulders align over wrists. And if it's not still there, bring that left foot back a little so it's in line with your right knee. Starting to walk hands in toward the knee, eventually lifting yourself up to a high kneel. And we'll bring left hand, palm face up on the thigh. Right hand reaches, palm facing to the left side. Big inhale, exhale, find that side bend. And then tune into your breath. Maybe each exhale drawing you just a little further down. Just a little more side stretch. Next inhale, lift yourself back up. Bring the right hand to the hip. Bring that left heel in just a little bit. Turn the toes out to face the side of your mat. Left hand comes just to the lower inner part of the thigh. Gently pressing into that knee. Lift the crown of the head. Exhale, twist to the right. Imagining each inhale growing you a little taller. Each exhale inviting a little more twist.
slow unwind back toward the front of your space release that left hand and then bring that leg to whatever position feels good to feel supported as you find your way back down making your way back to tabletop when you get to tabletop take your slow cat and your slow cow pausing in each for a full breath and then eventually making your way to a child's pose or wide knee child's pose Slow walking both hands toward the left side of your mat. Cross the right wrist across the left, reaching a little further out to the side. Slow walking back through center. Opposite side. Cross the wrist. Stretching opposite side body. Slow walking through center, letting the head soften down toward your mat. Maybe belly's resting on the thighs, head's drawing down toward the earth. Maybe head is actually resting on the earth. We're gonna slide the hands around and lift them up onto the low back and then lifting the hands up away from your spine. If it feels good, you can interlace the fingers here. Lift the hands up away from the spine with the fingers interlaced. Starting to slow release hands back down toward the spine. Sliding hands back around to the front of your mat. And we'll come around onto our back. So if it works for you this morning, lift yourself up a little bit, cross your ankles, bring your hips back toward your heels, slide right over those ankles, and then send the legs long in front of you or come around through kneeling or seat, however feels good to support you so that you can come down onto your back and find a happy baby. So spine fully relaxed down onto the mat, knees lift and come up toward armpits. Hands come to hamstrings, outer edges of the feet or peace fingers to big toe. Gently draw down on one side, let the other side lift. Draw down on the other side, opposite side lifts. Coming side to side a couple times. And then finding stillness in the center, bringing those legs in together, squeezing both knees in toward the belly. And then releasing your left leg, squeeze your right knee in toward your belly, bring the left sole of the foot to your mat, slide that leg long, rest it down onto your mat, give that right knee even a little more squeeze. And then releasing the arms, Point the right heel up toward your ceiling, straightening the knee, ankle over the hip. We're gonna bring the hands around to the thigh. And just with the sense of reaching the right heel toward the ceiling and toes pulling back toward the shin, you might find a stretch. So we'll pause here. Or if you want a little more, use those hands, draw that straight leg in closer to your belly. You can also bring the hands to calf here, if that feels better. If hands are engaged, relaxing the hands, relaxing that right leg, bringing that bent knee all the way back in toward the belly. Slide the left heel in, lift the left knee to meet it. Knees to chest pose, squeezing both knees in toward your belly. Bringing both hands over to your bent left knee. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it in while you send the right leg long and relax it down onto your mat.
And releasing the arms, pointing that left heel up toward the ceiling. Draw your toes back in toward your shin. Maybe you can find a stretch just with the heel reaching away and the toes pulling. Or add a little more by using the hands, drawing that straight leg in closer to your belly. Hands are engaged, releasing the hands, ankles back aligned over the hip. We'll bend the knee, start to bring that bent knee all the way back into the belly, sliding the right heel into me. Knees to chest pose, squeezing both knees in. And then releasing the soles of both feet back down onto your mat, keeping that bend into the knees. We're going to heel toe the feet out so they're about as wide as the outer edges of our mat. Hands could be to the belly or out to a T. Just make sure they're not tucked right beside your glutes. We're going to windshield wiper the legs side to side. Nice, slow, controlled movement. Inhaling, lifting center. Exhaling, lowering the legs. Next time those legs fall to the right, we'll let them stay to the right. If you want to think more about what is happening in your hips and spine, stay right here with a few full breaths, full easy exhales. Imagine those legs relaxing, hips relaxing, spine relaxing as you let everything soften down toward your mat. If you want to bring it up into the shoulders and arms, slide the hands up overhead. Interlace the fingers, flip the palms to reach away from the crown of the head. Shimmy head, neck, shoulders to the left until your palms are reaching in the opposite direction of your knees. Take a moment to stretch those hands away and then allow head, neck, shoulders to relax down onto your mat. If you added the arms variation, we'll start by bringing that upper body back to center. And then gently pulling your navel in. Imagine reaching your low back toward your mat, keeping that engaged, lift the knees back up. Windshield wiper the knees a few more times each side. Then the next time the legs fall to the left, we'll let them stay. Maybe this is your spinal twist for the day and you stay right here, thinking about what's happening in the thighs, hips, lumbar spine. If you wanna bring it up into the shoulders, if they're not still there, fingers interlace overhead and we reach those palms away, bring the hands in the opposite direction of where the knees are reaching, reach, reach, reach through the arms, shoulders. And then let those soften down onto your mat. If you brought the arms overhead, go ahead and bring your shoulders and head back to the center of your mat. Drawing the belly in, think about reaching the low back toward your mat. Slow, pull the legs back up. Take another windshield wiper each direction. Lifting the knees back to center. Bring your knees back toward your belly and find your happy baby again. Letting those knees fall wide, hands to hamstrings, outer edges of the feet or peace fingers to big toe. And then releasing the arms, letting the soles of the feet reach toward one another over the hips. Imagine reaching your knees out a little wider, pulling your heels in toward your groin. If they're in reach, go ahead and bring your hands to the outer edges of your feet. Draw those heels in a little closer as knees reach away. And 
And releasing the hands, bringing the legs back together over the belly, pause in this knees to chest pose, take a little rock and roll on the low back or find some knee circles. Or if there's some other shape, movement, posture, stretch that you would like to end your practice with, go ahead and add whatever that may be. Feels really supportive, juicy, or interesting to bring your practice to a close. And then eventually finding your way down to whatever shape you would like to take for a final relaxation, shavasana, or some other shape that will allow the whole body to be soft. Everything resting heavy down toward the support of your mat or the support of your props. Allowing the breath to be completely easy and soft. Maybe allowing the mind to be fully present with the sense of your breath for a moment, or maybe allowing the mind to rest empty. Beginning to gently but intentionally expand into the breath. And then inviting some gentle movements back into the body. Maybe finding one last stretch here if that feels good. And then if you're on your back, finding your way back through your knees to chest pose. Starting rolling the length of your spine or letting those knees take you over to fetal position. Rock and roll up to a seat if you like. Slow press your way up using the support of the arms if you like. Finding easy seat. And as we did in standing, first just imagining that sense of grounded foundation at your base. So tuning into maybe sits bones or glutes or outer parts of the legs or feet, feeling that foundation, that connection, and then building that gentle sense of opposition, spine lengthening away from tail, long at the back of the neck, maybe a little smile, soft shoulders. Cultivating a gentle observation. What comes up for you at the end of your stretch this morning? What do you notice in the body? In the breath? Maybe in thoughts or emotions? And as you're ready, floating the eyes open, meeting with hands to heart center. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, taking time out of your day to share your practice with me. I appreciate all of you. Hope you have a wonderful day.